So I wonder if this tractor would pull this disc better if it had wore out blades on it. Okay, so it is Monday afternoon and we're just getting rolling here pretty good. Kerr's got this one section apart. We're going to start slapping these new discs on there. We've got all new spacers and obviously discs enough to do both discs. And then we've got more spacers uh, over in this box over here and some more bearings. And then we've got our... Um, end wheels here too and discs so we're going to start slapping these new discs back on there um, here is the old ones off of this disc compared to the new ones so we are I didn't put a tape measure on there but that's got to be two inches it was that I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get a tape measure that looks like it's yeah, we are yeah, close to three inches of wear. Two and two and three quarters. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get things underway here. All right, so we're using a used disc on the outside because they usually get banged up pretty good. I had some discs left over from when we rebuilt the big disc a couple years ago. These are actually John Deere um, discs. So we've got eight of these that we're going to put on to this outside gang. And if they screw up on us, uh, we, can, um, we can go ahead and uh, get the a little easier.
All right, this disc is all done. We're going to hook on to the bigger disc over there. This disc has got uh, all Landall blades on it except that front right wing. That wing has got um, John Deere blades on it. So. We just raised the, tilted the whole disc so that it was higher in the front than in the back. And now we're getting it to just make its way in. So. Because this tractor is so low, you know, the drawbar is a lot lower. We want to be able to leave this tractor right on the disc so that we can raise and lower it to get these discs on. Ended up um, relieving. All right, we've got the big disc in here now. This is a model 6230 Landall disc. We put new blades on this uh, three, I believe it was three years ago. We ended up putting John Deere blades on it. I thought them were going to be better. And we ended up bending up quite a few of these blades when it was brand new. When we, well, right when we put the the disc blade, it's on it. Trying to find one here that's bent. Here's one right, right there that's bent. I mean, stuff like that happened the first couple days we were using it. Bent right there. And there's another one. It's kind of got some mud on it to make it look deceiving, but um, yeah, right there. That one bent, you know, spins like that in there. Uh, that happened the first couple days. There's another one right there. Um, try to point out a couple other ones, but yeah, we've got some spots where we've uh, welded U bolts, um, fixed them on the C springs. Um, we've got a gauge wheel out on this. We've got to put a new bearing in that get that in there now we had a little trouble getting it inside uh, we we're running into a little bit of a height difference here and uh, what we ended up doing because this tractor's got a low drawbar on it we ended up putting a hammer strap on this tractor that I made years ago but this drawbar should probably be flipped over so it would be higher up off the ground but uh, all we did was we tilted the 
the leveling part of the disc to uh, put the back down and then we we're able to get the uh, back in the, the, the door so we've got that offset here again now too it's set on G usually when we're running in the field we're running that dial there if it'll focus in um, on like about B or so but the tractor that we're running it with too has a taller um, drawbar with 4320s uh, a little lower to the ground so we're gonna go ahead and get started here on the um, we just end up taking the uh, units off at the spring cushions drop it down and then we start right in on it so we're gonna split up a couple of us are gonna work on one side a couple of us are gonna work on the other here. We have uh, two different kind of blades that we're going to be putting on uh, this one. We've got a uh, Landau blade there that we're going to put on one side of it. There's another stack there. And uh, we also have here, uh, Ingersoll uh, blades that we're going to put on there as well so we can kind of compare them because I know how the John Deere blades ended up. They didn't work out so great. Years ago we had a John Deere disc, a couple of them rather, and uh, they worked pretty good. A nice little plug in there for them guys. All right, we're going to get started here. All right, Joe and Norris, they've got the back center left um, apart. And uh, that one's got a bent arbor too. So this one's a 77 inch arbor. And um, I think I've depleted everybody's stock here in parts. So we've got to try to find uh, one of them here today. So we might be able to take that one there and weld a nut on the end and uh, use that one. So. Alright, this is the last section, got it all together. Now we use the impact uh, just on the end, just to make sure we've got enough spacers on the end of that arbor. And then uh, what we'll end up doing, I don't like to trust the impact, even though that is a one inch drive impact, it doesn't get that inch and three quarter bolt uh, tight enough. So we'll roll this in under the disc. They've got the center on the right hand side done now and uh we're gonna roll this section in
this one we did right. Get my axe. Try to push mine forward. So, we're freaking almost there. Maybe. Well, all right, we have got this disc done. Uh, I do have one um, thing left to do on this, and that is I've got to put that um, bearing assembly together for that uh, gauge wheel on that front left wing. But we had some problems with. A C spring in the center of this disc on this left portion of that front gang that caused a lot of problems. But we did put um, used discs on the outer wings on both the front left and right side. The we use a used one on there. That way, it doesn't throw the dirt. It always wants to throw the dirt up in a big. Oh, like a rooster tail. So we, we put a um, wore out one on there. It's a little smaller. And um, on the back, they gave me two discs for the other discs that were cut out in like a little bit of a triangle. Um, however, I didn't get discs for this blade. It was like that. So I just ended up cutting them. Um, I cut them just like they're, they're the same size as they're supposed to be. So... And just cut them with a plasma cutter so we ended up replacing quite a few arbors on this disc um, we had some that were bent we had some that were war and then we had some that we could not get the uh, well it screwed up the threads when we took the the nuts off so we replaced that arbor there uh, this one here is a used one that I ended up welding the nut on the end of it there. There's a new arbor here on this one. So I got one, two, and then we put replaced a few in the front. Uh, we replaced that one there. Um, that one, so three, four, five, we replaced uh, this one here too. That one is new. We had that one. And then we replaced this one. So we've got one, two, three, four on the front and three, three in the back. Now, 
The arbors in the front, those uh, were wore because this disc loosened up quite a few times. Um, you could see, well, right, right there, it's wore where the, where the disc had just kind of spun on there. So I figured I would just replace it. And then this one arbor here is bent. I don't know if it's this one. Yeah, it's actually this one is bent. In the center, um, I've got, I don't know, five or six blades left, but I should have four and two from the other one. I should have six left anyways here. So uh, that's going to do it anyways. Uh, well, thanks for watching, folks. That's going to do it for this video. I've got a little bit of coverage of uh, screwing around with the disc in the 4320 that I'll put together here in the next couple days. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you at the next video.